Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're continuing our introduction of the Thessalonian correspondence today. Yesterday, we looked at the book of Acts, the planning of this church, the historical context that we're dealing with, and we established that Paul was only in Thessalonica for three weeks ish, give or take a few days, before mob violence forced him to leave the city. He went then to Berea, was there an even shorter amount of time, and ended up in Athens. And what Paul did when he was in Athens was to send Timothy and Silas back to Macedonia to check on the churches there, something that Acts chapter 17 tells us, and something that Paul alludes to in First and Thess Second Thessalonians. We know from Acts chapter 17 that when Paul was in Athens, he felt oppressed because he was by himself and it was such an idolatrous city. And we know about his preaching in the marketplace and then his defense of the gospel on the Areopagus. That's all described in detail. We have his sermon from there. But he talks about that time in those terms in the book of 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians is a love letter written to this brand new baby congregation from the Apostle Paul, after Timothy's come back and given his report to Paul about the state of affairs in Thessalonica among the brethren. This is something he talks about at the end of chapter 2 through the beginning of chapter 3. We'll look at that text later on. But he makes it clear, I was really, really worried about you. And although I hated to be bereft of Timothy, I sent him back to see how you were doing and to encourage you. And now he's back. And he's told me how much you still love us and how faithful you are to what we taught you. And I can't, he says, how can I give thanks to God for everything you mean to me? Yeah, um, that's how happy he is. And that happiness, that joy, that love, that pride, and I mean that in the best sense, that it comes through every verse of First Thessalonians. It is a love letter to this church. He's just so proud of them, the, the way a parent's proud of a child. It's like, you know, he's gone. He's gone to the kindergarten play and saw his kid recite some long something long, and it was flawless. And his kid's a star. I don't know. He went. He went to the little league game, and and his and his kid, you know, had had um, you know uh, uh, threw somebody out at home plate and uh, and uh, pitched three shutout innings and hit a walk off home run. He's he's that proud of this brand new church. He just so he's bursting with joy. And, and, and love for this congregation because they're doing so well. Um, we also mentioned last time that the, because it's written so close to the planning of this church, it, it, he, he talks about what he did while he was there. And so we get, we get a real glimpse into Paul's method. And we have some of that in the, in the Acts, in the book of Acts. We know that he went to the synagogue first, as was his custom. We know what, how, what he preached when he was at the synagogue. He first established who the Christ is, who is the Messiah from the Old Testament. And then he made the case that Jesus of Nazareth is that Messiah because he fulfills all these prophecies. That's cool. That's important. Uh, and we learned that from the book of Acts. So uh, for, uh, with Paul's time here in, in Thessalonica, chapter 17, verses 1 through 10. But he talks about the way I treated you and the way we comported ourselves while we were there. In First Thessalonians chapter one, he also tells us in the in First Thessalonians what their qualities are and why they have been such a success. And to me, that's the most important thing uh, as the minister at a local congregation. Uh, it's the most important thing for me and for I think for us. If I were on the mission field, planning churches and stuff, the most important thing in First Thessalonians is what Paul has to say about my method and what I taught as of first importance. But as, as a local minister, as Timothy and Silas, or at least Timothy will later be, because he's going to be put in Ephesus for a while. What, 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 what is important to me for us, for our church, is do we have the qualities that they had? Because if we don't, it doesn't matter what else we have. They had qualities that made them right, that made them righteous, that made them successful. And he's going to identify them. He's going to identify them in the first chapter, in the hello. And then there is that which they have misunderstood and they have questions about. And that really is going to take up the end of First Thessalonians 
and nearly all of Second Thessalonians, pretty much all of Second Thessalonians. And what they need clarification about is the second coming. Because they have been so imprinted with the fact of the second coming and its imminence that they're panicked a bit in First Thessalonians and they are misapplying it in Second Thessalonians. So Paul has to really take a lot of time to clarify his teaching on the second coming, which says that from the very beginning, an eschatological consciousness, a realization that the Lord is coming and coming soon, was necessary to the planting of, the establishing of, and the growth of any congregation. That, that, that's something to think about as well. We're going to pick up with the text next time. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word.